first and foremost, as you know, got to know your four major numbers before you do any velocity banking, before you do any concept, any strategy as it relates to debt elimination or investing. You need to know these numbers, what's coming in, what's coming out, total debt and that net monthly cash flow. OK, I had an interesting conversation in the comment section on a particular video with, I believe, a subscriber, or maybe a critic. And I, I want to get you guys' feedback on this. OK, this kind of confused me. So I just want to know I'm not crazy in the head here. So let's just say I have a situation. I'm dealing with a client that they're generating, say, seven thousand five hundred a month. Their expenses, let's say, are five thousand. So you do the math. That's pretty easy. What are they cash flowing? Two thousand five hundred bucks. OK, now this number five thousand, there, there's still some confusion with people and it's understandable when I'm getting your numbers. I want to know every single expense, ladies and gentlemen, so that we know what the true net cash flow is. What does that look like? Okay. First, it's obviously the obvious stuff. You got debt payments. You got debt payments. Don't separate it. That's part of your expense, right? Pretty easy. You have monthly bills you know, cost of living. Okay. That are, these are like set bills. These don't typically change. Then you have your miscellaneous stuff where it, it's never the same number. The amount of money you spend on gas per month, the amount of money you spend on food per month, it's always fluctuating. So we like to get an average, right? That's, that's where kind of budgeting comes into play where you're like, you say, okay, here is the average, right? When it comes to food, in our household, let's just say you typically spend $600 a month, which means we don't want to go above the six. So if you're saying that you typically spend $600 a month on food, but then you're actually doing 610, 625, you're going to want to increase your average, right? Take the top number. So maybe it's really 650, right? Take that number and overestimate all of your miscellaneous bills. Okay. Now, what can be pretty interesting here, whether you're doing velocity banking or not, there's a lot of people in the United States that use credit cards to pay for things, right? So let's say you're typically running 2000 bucks on a credit card each and every month. That doesn't mean your expense now went to $7,000, right? So I was, I was having like a back and forth discussion with someone in the, in the comments. I'm like, where's this person coming from? I'm trying to really understand what it is that they're getting at. Maybe I need to explain things better in my videos. But if I'm telling you in, in a case study, this person spends $5,000 a month of which 2000 of the five are bills that they're running on a credit card. That doesn't mean I go from five and plus two, which makes seven. No, it's it's five total of the five. Two thousand is for expenses. And then what happens is we at the end of the month, you pay off in full. Typically, you pay off that card in full with your income because it was money you were already going to spend right now. Let's take this same example here. Same example. And let's say, OK, from this credit card, here's what some of you do. This is incorrect. If you're doing this, you don't want to do this. This is what some of you do. Let's say the credit limit, credit limit on this credit card is 10,000 bucks, right? And you owe, so you already owe money on the card, right? Already owe money on the card of 7,000 bucks. Here's what some of you will do. You'll take your expenses and you'll run it on the card. So you owed seven, you're going to run two. So it'll increase to 9K. And then let's just say the monthly payment on 7,000 will do 1.5% of the balance. Let's just say the monthly payment on 7K owed is 105, right? So what, what can happen is we said that the 5,000 is total expense. Let's say we included that 105 payment in the, in the five. I think this is where there might be a confusion for some of you that watch. Maybe let me know, right? I, I never thought this to be confusing, but again, 
it's, it's numbers and it can be confusing sometimes. So the monthly payment is 105. That is, that is a separate expense from the what? The 2000 that you're running bills. So where there might be a confusion when you're writing your numbers down is you're, you're saying, hey, I owe seven on this card. This is the this is the minimum monthly payment, but I'm paying 2000 to my card each month, right? Because you ran the card 2K and then you pay 2K, but you're forgetting to also add that monthly payment because that's the principle now to actually pay it down. So I've jumped on calls with people before where they were doing this and I'm like, they thought they were doing velocity banking because they're like, oh, well, I'm running my bills on this card and I'll and I'll be able to pay it down. I'm like, no, you originally owed 7,000. The 7,000 is the debt part. The 2K of bills is the expense part, but you're adding it to a debt that's already charging you an interest rate. You don't want to do that. You're getting beat up. You'd be better off with a credit card with a zero balance right be better off with a zero balance credit card and then running bills on that card paying it off each and every month for the cashback rewards the only way this works is if you apply this now here's where it can get a little more confusing the net cash flow is 2500 let's just say that's net cash flow this 105 is the monthly payment so there's principal and interest in that 105 where i was having a discussion with this person in the comment in the comments they were conflating the 105 in the cash flow and they were telling me denzel that why are you saying their cash flow is this the numbers are wrong and i'm like no no this is separate this 105 came from here not the cash flow so it's really to properly do this correctly to properly do this correctly at 7,000 owed you would need to be paying in two plus 2,005 plus 105 all right, so 2,000 plus 2,500, 2,500 plus 2,000 plus 105. So technically, you should, this is how much is going in to the card, 4,605, and then only two is coming out, which is why when doing velocity banking, 7,000, this is velocity banking with a credit card now, right? 7,000 minus 4,605 plus 2,000 came out. The balance is now less. Went from seven to four. Why this is faster? See, watch this. That's four thousand three ninety-five, right? Four thousand three ninety-five. That's what the balance went down to. Seven thousand minus cash flow minus the payment one hundred five. Denzel, it's the same thing as making extra payments. No, it's not. Denzel, you just did it. You got the same numbers, right? You just showed seven thousand is how much I owe. And at the end of the month or on the due date, I pay the 105 monthly payment and I add my cash flow and I get your number. What the heck is the difference? Okay, what you didn't account for here is the interest cost for not paying into the card early. See, my money, my 4605 went into the card earlier than your 2500 and 105. Technically speaking, this strategy only paid in 2,605 total in here total in was 4,605 so what will happen is my borrowing costs will be less right it'll be less so instead of being at 4,395 because i'm getting what cashback rewards on the 2,000 say i'm getting 2.5 percent cash back it's fifty dollars so you got a minus 50 bucks right and then you minus the additional interest savings of having money sit in the card for a longer period of time than waiting to make the payment so do they get the same results roughly similar results yes i just come out ahead of you just a tad bit faster right and that compounds that's fifty dollars every month for however long it takes me to get out of debt but what you have to under also understand same payment 105 105 right same monthly payment their 105 interest is higher than my 105 my 105 interest cost will be less that is proper etiquette when it comes to using a credit card that you already have an existing debt on to do velocity banking what would be incorrect is when you are not paying that additional monthly payment and you're just running bills on the card 
And what's happening is you're never paying off the original debt. So you're stuck, right? You're never really paying it off. And then if there's a discrepancy in the numbers, because you didn't, you know, provide the numbers accurately and effectively, then that's where you're going to have your issue, right? So I hope that was clear. That's a big tip right there.